Hi, this is Joseph Tan from AnswersAcademy.info. The question to consider for today is um, the commonly asked question, doesn't carbon-14 dating prove that the Earth is very old, much older than the biblical age that is stated in the genealogical record in the Bible? How do we answer this question? Carbon-14 is used for dating because it is unstable. In other words, it is radioactive. And radioactive means that carbon-14 will decay in a process called beta decay. And it will decay into a stable element that is nitrogen-14. Now, the rate of decay here is called the half-life. Now, what is the half-life of carbon-14? The half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 5, years. What does it mean? It means that uh, at the end of 5,730 years, whatever starting amount of carbon-14 we have, uh, half of it, 50% of it, would have been changed into the stable element of nitrogen, whereas the other 50% is still in the unstable carbon-14 uh, form. There are two main misconceptions that we need to clarify concerning carbon-14 dating. Here we go. The first misconception is this, carbon-14 dating shows that the Earth is very old, i.e. it is billions of years old. Now, this is absolutely not true. This is because carbon-14 is used only to date organic materials. That means once living things. It cannot be used to date rocks, only organic materials. Secondly, since carbon-14 decays at such a rapid rate of only at about 5,730 years in its half-life, then the dates that it gives is only in the thousands and not in the millions because uh, by the time millions of years have passed, so it supposes, there will be no traces of carbon-14 left. So the rapid decay of carbon-14 can only point to thousands of years, not millions. In fact, the Accelerator Mass Spectrometer, AMS, has an assumed accuracy of measuring only up to 80,000 years by measuring the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12. So definitely not in the millions of years range. So this is a misconception. Here's how carbon-14 dating works. We can try and backtrack to the point of death, meaning roughly when did the fish die in this case, if all three variables are known. Well, we know the half-life of carbon-14. We can also measure the current amount of carbon-14, but we do not know the starting amount of carbon-14 in the fish in the first place. There is a critical assumption here to calculate the starting amount of carbon-14 in the fish here, in this example, and that is the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 must be constant. But real experimental data shows that this ratio is not constant. Now, if this ratio is not constant, it's going to trickle down and affect the overall calculation and give you a much older age than it really is. In fact, calculation Calculation shows that it takes about 30,000 years for the ratio of carbon-14 and carbon-12 to reach a state of equilibrium. Now, if it requires 30,000 years for carbon-14 and carbon-12 to reach a state of equilibrium and current data doesn't show that it is constant, then perhaps the Earth is much younger than 30,000 years. Think about it. One final evidence. Diamonds, the hardest known substance, are extremely resistant to contamination and they are, they are estimated by secular scientists to be in the range of millions to billions of years old. Now that's the assumption of the age of diamonds. But guess what we have discovered now? 
we have discovered carbon-14 in diamonds. Now, what does this mean, carbon-14 still in diamonds? Now, since the half-life of carbon-14 is relatively short, that is 5,730 years, there should be no detectable carbon-14 left after about 100 thousand years. So if we can still find traces of carbon-14 in diamonds today, how can the rock layers of the diamond itself be millions and billions of years old? Carbon-14 in fact is evidence that we have a young earth which corresponds to the biblical time scale rather than the evolutionary time scale. So just as the diamond is a woman's best friend, carbon-14 is actually the best friend for creationists to show that the earth is actually quite young relative to the time scale of the evolutionists. And it confirms more the age that is according to the biblical time scale than that of the secular scientists. Think about it. This is Joseph Tan here from AnswersAcademy.info. Thanks for watching.